Ghost of Tsushima is quite a fun game. In fact, I found it so fun, I actually decided to 100% complete the game. I don't often 100% games. The only other one I've done is Spider-Man on the PS4. I am planning on 100% completing some other games in the future, most notably God of War. So Ghost of Tsushima has some pretty fun gameplay. The sword is fast and slashy, and the sharp noises it makes when you swing the sword makes it very satisfying to use. The combat is no case of just violently button mashing and fights. You need to time attacks and patiently wait for your enemy to attack so you can counter them. I love the different stances you learn that are used to effectively kill a certain type of enemy class. For example, the wind stance is great to use against the spearmen. It was very rewarding being able to take down these enemies quicker after studying and killing the leaders so you could learn these new stances. Also, at the start, I found the game to be quite a challenge, which then gets easier thanks to me gradually getting better in combat and upgrading my armour, increasing my health, and other stuff like that. I found the standoff fights fun, however it is so annoying having to watch this same exact cutscene, which you can't skip before every fight. Yeah, it was cool at first, but being forced to watch this cutscene that is basically the same each time before every duel is just so fucking annoying. I found the bow to be a very useful weapon in combat. Every time you pull the bowstring back, you get this nice, realistic, tight grip feeling. I found myself not really bothering to use the blow dart weapon. It gets introduced near the end of the game, and by that time, I was already pretty strong, and I kind of forgot to use the blow darts because I already have my bow, which is better because it has more ammo. Sometimes the stealth is not the best, I could just run past an enemy if he wasn't looking in my direction and even then, if they were looking in my direction and there was a decent amount of distance between us, I could quickly run past and go into cover without any consequences. Whilst I was doing a side mission with Lady Masako, there was this part where she said something like, you kill the guy on the left, I'll go for the guy on the right. You know, one of them usual things you see in a lot of games. Anyway, I don't know why but I thought it'd be cool to climb the little gate fence thing. I decided to take out the guy with my bow and shoot down, so after that I was expecting Lady Masako to kill the other guy, but she didn't so I just ended up having to kill the other guy. This isn't a big deal and to be honest it isn't really just a complaint, I just wanted to bring it up in this video. Anyways, some actual complaints I do have is not being able to craft sticky bombs, arrows or any of those kind of weapons. I already have to go around getting items so I can get all of this shit from people, so why can't I just make my own? I feel like the game could have benefited with being able to craft these type of things. I also found it pretty stupid how your horse can't swim across water. If I needed to get to a place where water was in the way, I'd have to end up riding all the way around, or jumping off my horse, swimming to the other side, whistle for my horse to come and get me, then get on my horse and finally continue my journey. Anyway, I did really enjoy the whole nature element to this game. Like when you set your destination to go somewhere, the wind actually guides you which way is the correct way to go. This is a concept I don't recall seeing before and it's really just a cool, unique feature. In some missions, you need to follow a trail of flowers to find whatever you're searching for. You get these little birds that will guide you to places that usually have an item you can get. There are also fox dens. When I first encountered a fox, I noticed it seemed to run and then stop. I got the impression it wanted me to follow it. So I decided to do exactly that. It eventually led me to a shrine and I ended up benefiting from it. This felt pretty cool because I did it all on my own, but when I found out it says to do this on the loading screen, it felt a bit less special. But yeah, the fox den things were pretty cool and I love how you get to pet the foxes afterwards. The bamboo shrines were also pretty fun to do as well. It's simple gameplay and not that challenging, but I still found them fun to do. Also, the haiku shrines are boring. I noticed that sometimes in the world, some random things would happen. For example, I was planning my attack on a Mongol campsite. I noticed that the bandits just came in and started a fight with the Mongols. Which, I mean, it helped me out quite a bit, as it was a lot easier for me then. One time when I was getting ready to attack another Mongol camp, a bear started attacking the Mongols. Whilst I was running around the world, lightning struck right in front of me, which was incredible. I loved all these random things that could just happen because it made me wonder what else could happen in this game, and it left a level of uncertainty. This world looks breathtaking as well, it's so full of life with beautiful colours of nature like the vibrant bright flowers and the golden leaves on the trees swaying in the wind. You get the birds and foxes which I've already talked about, you get the civilians living in their towns with the wonderful looking Japanese houses, and that's another praise I have for this game, the architecture is amazing. 
The houses on the inside and outside, the temples and everything else looks like it belongs in Japan. I'm actually quite a big fan of Japanese architecture as a whole, so it was really nice being able to explore this world. I found the story to be pretty average. It's not a bad story, but I wouldn't really say it's a good one either. I did enjoy the Mongol war setting, and the game starts off pretty well throwing us right into the action. The characters are okay. The main guy we play as is called Jin. At the start of the game, he doesn't want to kill people. That is out of the Samurai Code. But as the game goes on, we see him become more comfortable killing people. That is out of the Samurai Code. But other than that, not much has changed about him personality-wise. He's just a decent guy all the way through. I feel he could have worked better if he starts to go down a path of darkness and destruction. Maybe he ends up killing people who have done some things wrong, but don't deserve death. And eventually, this leads to us becoming the villain in the next game. Ryuzo was by far the most interesting character. He's the leader of the Ronin and needs to look after his men, so it's very believable why he betrays Jin. What makes this even better is we see he doesn't really want to join the enemy's side, but he feels like he has to to keep his men alive. It's a shame he gets killed off though. I really would have liked for him to maybe have a little redemption arc or maybe just learn more about his character. All of the characters are just okay, to be honest. Yuna, Lord Shimura, Sensei, and Lady Misako, there's not really a lot to their character, but I wouldn't really say they're bad as well. I did enjoy the side missions from Sensei and Lady Misako, especially the part where you have to fight Lady Misako. Even though you go back to being friends with her right after. <sighs> That's a side, Jacob. It says in the script. I don't know if you'll include it, though. Another character is Taka the younger brother to Yuna. I don't have much to say about him other than his death was stupid. It's pretty dumb that Jin lets Taka help him with this shit. Jin knows he has no training or anything, so it's just really dumb to be honest. At the end, I was expecting Lord Shimura to forgive us after we get rid of the Mongols, but that is not the case, and I am so happy this game went down this path. I thought it would be cool if Lord Shimura was going to be the final boss fight, but I wasn't expecting this game to do that. The battle between Jin and Lord Shimura actually has a bit of emotional weight to it. At the end, I decided to kill Lord Shimura as that is what the character would have wanted and it would be an honour to his legacy, and honour is a big part to his character. But even after he died, I didn't feel as sad as I felt I should. Like, yeah, it was kind of sad, but I don't know, man. I feel like this game was expecting me to cry or some shit, but that just wasn't the case. The only character I was emotionally connected to was my horse. At the start of the game, we get to pick a horse, and we get to give it a name. There are three horses and three names to pick from. So, I ended up choosing the white horse and named him Sora. Sora was a good boy, and he died, and I was pretty fucking sad, to be honest. That was the death that got to me the most. I did eventually warm up to my new horse. It was the black one, and I called him Kage. Anyway, I miss you, Sora. You were a real one. Like I said, the story isn't special, but the highlight was definitely towards the end of Act 2, when you were in that amazing battle, taking back the castle, and then Lord Shimura is forced to take you as his prisoner after you poison the Mongols. That was definitely the best part of the story. I like how the NPC side quests show how the war has affected the civilians, mainly their loved ones dying and all of that stuff. Unfortunately, most of the side quests are very repetitive, and there's, like... Just over 60, I think. So that's basically just 60 of the same side quest. The character models look pretty decent, but I noticed they don't always express that much emotion. Most notably, Jin's facial animations. Although, I did notice during some cutscenes, sweat would run down a character's face. I haven't noticed this type of thing in many games before. I think maybe Uncharted 4. I'm not completely sure on that, though. It was some nice little detail that they didn't need to do, but it's cool anyway. Overall, Ghost of Tsushima is a very fun game to play. I would actually recommend going for the 100% completion, as it's a pretty easy game to get the Platinum Trophy for. It's a beautiful looking game with fun gameplay. The story isn't a masterpiece, but it's good enough to make you want to keep playing and find out what's going to happen next. I really like Japan, so being able to play this game with all the samurais and shit, I thought that was just pretty fun. With all of this being said, I would have to give Ghost of Tsushima an 8 out of 10.